All right, everyone, I see two o'clock on my screen. I'm over in Eastern time. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get started. Just let me let my computer calm down for a little bit. Uh, so first and foremost, thank you everyone for joining us. For those of you on Zoom, for those of you on Facebook, thank you for your time today. So this is Chill Skills. It's Sporlin Tech Talks. It's a monthly webinar that we do where we're training on our product and we're training on HVACR. In today's episode, we're going to talk about what is a solenoid valve. Okay, so first and foremost, uh, for those of you on Zoom, if you do not have sound via your computer, there was a dial-in attached to the invite. Please mute your microphones. Um, they should be muted anyway. And if you have any questions, if you are on Zoom, feel free to drop them in the Q&A window. I have Jim Echelkamp here from our application team. He's going to be helping answer questions. For those of you on Facebook, I will get to your questions as soon as they pop up. Again, there's a little bit of a delay on Facebook, so whenever they do come in, I'll get to them. And this webinar is being recorded, so you can use it for future reference. All right, first and foremost, let me introduce myself. My name is Henry Papa. I am a Sporlin sales engineer out of Florida. If you have any follow-up, feel free to leave it on our Facebook page. Um, again, you can ask questions in Zoom or you can shoot me an email. My email address is henry.papa at parker.com. All right, so in this training seminar, what you're gonna to learn today is the basic principles and operation of a solenoid valve and their primary uses in a refrigerant flow system. Okay, so you're going to be familiarized with the two basic classifications that we have for solenoid valves. You'll learn the two types of operation based on control of the refrigerant flow when a solenoid coil is either energized or de-energized, and you'll learn several common uses for solenoid valves in various parts of a refrigerant flow system. Okay, so a solenoid valve. It's an electrically operated device. The primary purpose of these valves is to control the flow of fluids. In our industry, it's to control the flow of refrigerants, whether they be liquid or vapor. Now, a solenoid valve is operated by opening and closing an orifice, also known as a port, which is internal to the valve body. And it's either going to permit, allow flow, or it's going to prevent flow through the valve. The way it's controlled is by an electrical current. And we're going to talk about that theory next. Okay, when we apply electrical current through the solenoid coil, it's going to create a magnetic field which will either open or close the valve. So let's look at this valve body here that we have on the screen. The basic parts of it. Number one, it's the valve body itself, typically made of brass. We have both our inlet and outlet connections. Then we look at the top, that whole top portion is the solenoid coil. Inside of the solenoid coil are coil windings. When we apply current through those windings, that's what creates a magnetic field. We also have the junction box, which is where you are going to wire your solenoid. Then we look internal to the valve. We have a plunger. We have a kickoff spring, which is going to assist that plunger from closing. We have the seat disc, and then we have the actual port, which is allowing flow through the valve. Okay, as I mentioned, solenoid valve operation is based on the theory of electromagnetism. As you apply a current through copper coil windings, it creates a magnetic field. So if you have a piece of magnetic metal, such as iron or steel, when you create that magnetic field, it's going to pull that piece of metal into the center of that magnetic field. So in the case of a solenoid valve, it will raise that piece of metal. And what we've done is attached a stem to that plunger, that piece of metal. 
And that is going to be the principle that's used to open the port of the valve or a pilot port inside of the valve. Now, when electrical current is cut from the coil, the magnetic field dissipates, goes away, it collapses, and that's when the stem and plunger fall, either due to gravity or with that kickoff spring that we mentioned internally to the valve. Okay, so the two basic valve types that we have are direct acting and pilot operated valves. In a direct acting valve, the plunger is pulled directly off the main port, meaning when you apply that current to the coil, that is going to move the plunger off of the main port, allowing full flow into the valve. When we have pilot operated, when we pull that plunger, that is going to pull the stem off of a pilot port, which will allow your line pressure to assist in opening the valve and allow that full flow. Now, I just got a comment that popped up on my side from Facebook. Uh, Michael Davis asked to go over A8 and A9 valves. Those are our Flocon valves. And Michael, unfortunately, today we're going to focus on the solenoid valves, but we will get there down the road. So we'll table that for another topic, and we'll notify you when we're ready. Okay, so direct acting valves. They are going to be limited to small port sizes, typically less than a quarter of an inch port internally to the valve. Um, so if you're familiar with our valves, that's gonna be the A3, E3, and W3 series. Also the XSP for those of you doing uh, CO2. So the flow capacity for these valves is limited with small flow requirement or applications with minimal available pressure differential across the valve port. So while direct acting valves can operate at low pressure differentials, we're still going to recommend a minimum of one PSI pressure drop across the valve, regardless of the line pressure, okay? And so remember, direct acting means by applying current to your coil and moving the plunger, that's gonna open the main port of the valve. Okay, now the second type of solenoid valve that we have is pilot operated, meaning when you open or when you apply current to the coil and you move the plunger, that's gonna open a pilot port and that's gonna allow line pressure to help open the valve. Okay, so again, in a pilot operated valve, the stem and plunger assembly opens a pilot port that's going to release pressure that may be on top of the disc. It's going to move upward allowing the main valve port to move. Okay. And so the next thing we're gonna do is go through the four phases of operation for a pilot uh, operated solenoid valve. Okay, so phase number one, with the coil de-energized, you're going to have your line pressure coming through this equalizer hole that is highlighted here with the arrow. Let's see if you can see that there. All right, that's gonna allow pressure to get above the seat and keep the valve closed. In phase two, when we energize that coil, that is what's gonna pull that plunger up into the center of the magnetic field, pulling the stem off and opening this pilot hole that you'll see here. Now that is going to allow pressure on top of the seat to vent and get below the seat itself. In phase three, now that we've relieved the pressure on top of the seat, the disc will raise. And once the port is open, the disc is gonna be held off of the seat based on the pressure differential across the port. And then we get to phase four when we do want to shut off the valve. We de-energize our solenoid coil. The plunger is going to fall based on gravity or that kickoff spring. 
And when that happens, you're no longer venting pressure from above the seat. And as refrigerant continuously flows through the valve, the pressure will drop, allowing the seat to fall closed and keeping the valve closed. Okay, so what's important here is you do have to have a minimum of one PSI pressure differential for full operation. Without that differential, the valve for one will not stay open. Okay, and that's why it's so important when we talk about sizing solenoid valves not to oversize because that is very common. When they're oversized, you don't have a pressure drop and these normally closed valves will stay open. Okay, so now that we've talked about direct acting versus pilot, now we'll talk about normally closed valves versus normally open. And as the names imply, a normally closed valve means it is closed when you have no electrical current put to the solenoid versus a normally open valve, which is going to be open without any power. So a normally open solenoid valve operates really similar to a normally closed. Uh, the system pressure is utilized to open and close both of the pilot ports in these valves. The major difference, again, is going to be that for a normally open construction, with the coil de-energized, a spring is going to be used to push the stem and plunger upward, holding the valve open. And so this allows the disc to rise but because of the pressure difference between the bottom and the top of the disc, uh, that permits flow to take place. Okay. So again, in these normally open pilot operated valves, when the coils are energized, the stem and plunger assembly is going to be pulled down into the magnetic field, and that's going to close the pilot port. When you close the pilot port, the pressure on the top of the disc is going to equalize with the incoming pressure and the disc will start to move down, closing the main port. Uh, and that valve will remain closed as long as the coil is energized. All right, and here is a snapshot of a typical refrigeration system. And why I like this picture is because it shows all applications for solenoid valves. Okay, over with the green lines on the far right, we have our liquid line solenoid valve that could be used as a pump down solenoid. So that could be tied into a low pressure switch. Okay, so when uh, the valve cuts and your pressure drops, then your compressor will cut off. Okay, now with the red lines that we'll see toward the middle of the picture, we have a hot gas solenoid valve. So that could be for hot gas bypass uh, to prevent icing, keep your um, capacity up. And then in the left, we have our superheated suction gas line in blue, and you'll see our suction line and solenoid valve. Um, typically where you see suction line solenoid valves, it could be for a dual temp case, it could be for again, a suction stop, um, could be to prevent migration and an off cycle, preventing refrigerant from getting back into your evaporator. Okay. And so that is actually going to wrap up what we have today on solenoid valves and how they operate. Um, I'll go ahead and start looking to see if we have any questions. Okay, I, it looks like I am getting a couple questions here. So what is the catalog of this product? So for anything Sporlin solenoid valve related, you're going to go into the 30 section um, off of sporlin.com in the literature. Our main catalog for solenoid valves is 30-10. And you can also Google that. I've, I've had luck doing that. Just Google Sporlin 30-10 and it should bring you to our solenoid bulletin. Good question, Jose. Oh, I actually got a question a couple minutes ago. Does Sporlin have any plans to add anything new to their website for training modules, et cetera? Yes, so we continually update our chill skills section. Uh, one of the newest chill skills sections we've done is on our case controls. We are doing these monthly webinars. And if you also haven't seen the email blast that we send out 
um, for our tech tips from our applications team, those are great references. And to be honest with you, some of our literature, most of our literature is great literature. Feel free to browse all of them. There's a lot of good content in there. I've read a couple of refrigeration manuals, handbooks, textbooks, and they always seem to reference our bulletins. Okay, I, it looks like I am getting a couple questions here. So what is the catalog of this product? So for anything Sporlin solenoid valve related, you're going to go into the 30 section um, off of sporlin.com in the literature. Our main catalog for solenoid valves is 30-10. And you can also Google that. I've, I've had luck doing that. Just Google Sporlin 30-10 and it should bring you to our solenoid bulletin. Good question, Jose. Oh, I actually got a question a couple minutes ago. Does Sporlin have any plans to add anything new to their website for training, modules, et cetera? Yes, so we continually update our chill skills section. Uh, one of the newest chill skills sections we've done is on our case controls. We are doing these monthly webinars. And if you also haven't seen the email blast that we send out um, for our tech tips from our application team, those are great references. And to be honest with you, some of our literature, most of our literature is great literature. Feel free to browse all of them. There's a lot of good content in there. I've read a couple of refrigeration manuals, handbooks, textbooks, and they always seem to reference our bulletins. A uh, couple more questions coming in. So in the future, it would be helpful to show us how to size a solenoid valve using the selection Sporlin program. And that is a great comment slash question. Uh, if you haven't checked out our podcast, I did do a quick podcast on how to size solenoid valves, um, but I would love to do a webinar where we go through the Sporlin virtual engineer and size solenoid valves. So that'd be great. Um, but again, in the meantime, check out section 30 of our literature on Sporlin.com. We have a lot of good useful information on how to size solenoid valves, uh, and that should definitely help you out. Uh, another question here from Skip French. Does Sporlin produce a throttling valve that can be used as a water makeup line? Uh, I might have to get some further clarification on, on what you're asking for, um, but we do have valves for secondary cooling, so that could be used for essentially a water or a glycol line, if that's what you're mentioning. Uh, for those of you on Facebook, you probably won't see this question. It says, where is the pressure bleed for the pressure? to enter the top of the seat of the pilot operated valve when closed. And so what he's referring to is where does the bleed pressure come from to get on top of the seat to keep the valve closed? And that's gonna be coming from inlet pressure. Uh, there's a little passageway for it to get above the seat. I do have another question here. So should a valve be selected by line size or capacity? We're always gonna preach this. It's always gonna be sized off of capacity. Um, so for, ex for example, if you were coming into a wholesale branch to look for a 3 8 by 3 8 solenoid valve, I have at least three or four different sizes from down to shooting off the hip here, probably a quarter ton up to five tons. Um, so you could have a valve that's grossly oversized, grossly undersized, you might get lucky but you always wanna size a solenoid valve based on the capacity. Make sure it's able to handle your pressures and your flows. Okay, one more question here is, what is the maximum MOPD with Sporlin valves? And that does vary by body size. I believe on average, it's about 300 PSI. Um, I will get back to you on that with a correct answer, uh, but it does vary by body. All right, so I guess we don't have any more questions. Again, this will be um, recorded. I mean, it is recorded. You can follow up and watch it again on Facebook. Uh, I believe we post these somewhere as well. Um, if you have any follow-up questions, feel free to reach out to me. Feel free to leave it on Sporlin's Facebook page and we will get to you. Um, but we had a great turnout today. I wanna thank everyone for your time, everyone on Facebook. Thank you so much. Um, we will catch you on the next one.